Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my Code to Care uh, series. Uh, I like to talk about or rotate through education topics, use case topics, and safety bias ethics topics. And I wanted to do an education uh, topic. And I wanted to answer the question or get you to think about the question, is your data ready for AI? And one of the things I wanted to talk you through is the importance of a data strategy as a um, dependency for a good AI uh, strategy. So let me explain some things you need to think about relative to your data and why it's important for AI. So I'm going to start with just um, traditional machine learning models, uh, and then I'll go into Gen AI. But traditional machine learning models are models that you need to train, and you need to train it on your own data. So these models generally do not come trained. And so in order to train one of these models, typically you have a table of data. So let's say appointment no-shows. That was an example I used in a prior um, uh, a prior uh, video. So let's say you have a table of appointments and you want to predict a column like your no-show uh, column. And you have past data the last two years, information about all the appointments and whether the patient showed up or not. You can train a model that way and then you can use the model to do a very good job predicting whether the patient's are going to show up or not. So you need to supply the data here. And so here are the things that you need to think about. One is the data needs to be normalized. So if you have a gender column, let's say, uh, and you think that might impact whether somebody's going to show up or not, probably does, um, you can have males being M sometimes, being the word male in uppercase sometimes, being a one, um, you know, an integer sometimes, something else. You have to kind of normalize all that because the essence of machine learning is to pattern match. And so if you're saying the same thing, whether it be a demographic data like gender or, um, you know, zip code or things like, uh, things like that, or some other you know, appointment type, things like that. Uh, if you don't normalize it, you're going to hurt the ability, the model's ability to normalize uh, all that, uh, or sorry, to pattern match on all that data. The second I would think about is patient matching. So if you're getting data from multiple data sources, you might think that you're bringing it together, but you might be just putting patient information side by side. You need to match it under the same patient ID so that the patient's entire history of appointment no-shows, let's say, um, or aggregate patient data is brought together properly. So you get a better sense for what the average number of no-shows a patient might have. If you're not doing patient matching, that key number is going to be wrong. So you really need a good patient matching algorithm if you have multiple uh, data sources. And the third I would just say is outside data. Some models uh, really thrive on knowing what happened outside. So for instance, readmission, one of the main predictive features of a readmission is how many times somebody has been to the ED in the last year. Um, well, if you know about other activity and you can bring that into your model, you're gonna have an accurate read of the number of times a patient has been to the ED in the last year. If you only have half the data or half the experience, in your community, all the numbers are gonna be divided in half and you're not gonna have that predictive quality. So having outside data, getting it to match across patients, normalizing it really makes your models way better um, when you train them. Hey there, I'm just popping in to say that I'd love to hear your comments and feedback on this video. I read all the comments, so let me know what you think. Let me know what suggestions you have for my next video by uh, putting in some comments uh, below the line here. Thanks. The other type of data is Gen AI. You might say, hey, with Gen AI, don't these models come trained? Do I really need to supply a data? Um, and the answer is a yes. Um, data plays a different role in, in Gen AI. So you are right to ask the question, uh, and I'm right to explain it as a separate little section here. So let's say you have your app. Let's say you, you're it's a chat app, let's say you're getting, or you're creating a chat experience in your own application. You're taking a user question. You may remember from one of my prior videos that that question goes into a prompt that's sent to the LLM and then a response comes back that you show to the user. But that prompt 
is also filled with context and other sorts of things from your application. So it might be a summary of the patient record. It might be some internal policy documents. It might be information from your website. Um, the way these LLMs work is you have this architecture, retrieval, augmented generation, where your data is put into the prompt like a just-in-time learning, and that allows the LLM to give a good, accurate, in-context answer that you want for your users. So here is your data. So again, you need to think about the quality of that data. And I would, I would uh, say very similar things. One is you need to think about your patient matching strategy. So if you want to present a comprehensive chart, let's say, to the LLM, then you have to bring the data together through all the sources uh, from, that, uh, from that chart. The second, there's, there's sometimes workflow implications. So I was on a panel uh, recently, and somebody told the story about how they were using um, an LLM technology, but it wasn't summarizing the patient visit very well. Uh, and it turned out that it didn't have all the information because the doctor had to sign the note before the note was available to the LLM. So um, it was kind of missing key information, which would have allowed the LLM to do a good job. So sometimes you need to understand the workflow implications of making that data available to pass in this particular uh, workflow. And the um, last one I'll just point out is ambient listening is this great use case for Gen AI. Um, and we've done some experiments where we've just taken the audio of a visit and sent it to a, um, an LLM and said, can you please summarize this visit or write me a soap note or that uh, sort of thing. And then we've taken just the audio plus a summary of the patient's historical chart and sent that to the LLM. And in the second case where you had more information beyond the audio, the soap note was way better. And so this is an example where something basically works. You can send an audio, get a summary of that visit, but you can enhance it with your own data to create a better, higher quality uh, output. And so sometimes, um, sometimes you can think about more data sources that you can send to pack into this prompt before the prompt to give you a better, uh, a better higher quality experience. Uh, so that's that. I hope that gave you a couple ideas as to think about the data implications of AI. Uh, it has been said that your AI is really only as good as your data. So if you don't have good data, if you don't sort of bring it together in logical ways and really feed it to your AI uh, projects, your projects are just going to be less successful, less accurate, less impactful. So I would encourage you to think through that data strategy as part of your overall AI strategy. So I hope that was interesting, and until next time, bye. Hey there, I hope you liked this video. Um, I've added a next video at the end of this, so um, so take a look at that if you, uh, if you enjoyed this. And if something resonated with you, please drop uh, a comment um, at, um, uh, down below here. I read every comment uh, myself, and I really appreciate hearing from you. Thanks.